going to Grandma's house today. Hurrah, hurrah. Let's make a wreath out of jigsaw puzzles. Making a wreath should be as relaxing as putting a jigsaw puzzle together. Take your time and enjoy the process. For a normal sized wreath, be sure that you have at least two 1,000 piece puzzles to start with and a workspace where you can spread out and be messy. You will need glue, some form of support to set your wreath on, I use plastic lids, and a pair of scissors. You don't get to use scissors when you are actually putting the puzzle together, only when you are making a wreath out of the puzzle pieces. You may also want to use a tool to help move pieces into place. A toothpick or bent paper clip works well for that. You also need a base for the wreath. You can use thick cardboard or quarter inch plywood for your base. This size was decided because of the platter and plate we use to make a basic template. You can decide what size you would like your wreath. Our wreath base has been painted on one side for a nice look and to help seal against moisture. We will be gluing pieces on the side that is not painted. It is easiest to use puzzle pieces that are the same shape and thickness. For a challenge, make a wreath out of a puzzle with really crazy shapes. You'll be surprised at the beauty and uniqueness of the wreath that you end up with. Our wreath base is a circle. Note that as you move from the outside toward the middle, that the size of the circle gets smaller. As you move from the inside toward the middle of the wreath, the size of the circle gets bigger. We will be moving in both directions and will need to increase pieces in our rounds or decrease pieces in our rounds accordingly. For the first layer, you can use a line of glue. For additional layers, I prefer to put the glue on each individual piece. Starting on the inside of the wreath, place the pieces as close together as you can. They should extend beyond the edge of the base. Think of it this way. Leave the head and the arms of the puzzle piece above the waterline. For this wreath, I am picking pieces at random. The only real color coordination for this puzzle is to not use the same colors next to each other in the same row. You can choose and adjust the colors you use based upon the puzzle pieces that you have. Use all the same shape of puzzle pieces as much as possible. Sort through the pieces as you go, putting any of the other shapes in grouped piles because you will need them later. If your row does not come out even, use a larger or smaller piece to fill a space. A small gap is okay and should be covered by the next round of pieces. As you put pieces on the outside of the wreath, leave a small gap between them. This gives a little more space before needing to start reducing the number of pieces in a round. The pieces should, like before, extend beyond the edge of the base. You will find pieces that you do not want to use in your puzzle, either because of their shape or their color. Set those aside in their own pile. Let the glue dry. The middle section of the wreath must be filled in as support for puzzle pieces and to support a bow or hanger after the wreath is completed. Glue down puzzle pieces as filler that you do not want to be seen. If you make more than one puzzle wreath, you will usually have plenty of pieces left over to use as filler. As you work, try to keep things as flat as possible. If you need to, you can cut pieces to fit because this area will be fully covered and your cuts will not be seen. I have found that I can do a filler layer followed by another round on both the inside and outside parts of the wreath before having to wait for the glue to dry. As
as we start the second round, individually glue the pieces for a neater end result. Place the puzzle pieces so that they cover the cracks between the pieces on the previous row. Each piece should also be placed just slightly back towards the center of the wreath. Let the glue dry. Have you noticed that it is the tips of the puzzle pieces that show? That is how you distribute the color during this process, by looking at the tips of the puzzle pieces. Continue this process, doing the filler layer, then another set of rounds. Then let the glue dry. You can see how we are slowly covering up the filler or support area. More of the filler pieces are having to be cut. Now we are having to reduce the number of pieces on the outside rounds. We do that with some of the pieces we have been saving. Place these pieces that are a different shape at an angle. When you do two of those side by side, you can reduce the number of pieces needed on the outside of the wreath. As the space between pieces grows on the inside rounds, use larger pieces to cover those gaps. When the spaces are large enough, add another of the normal pieces in the middle of the larger pieces. These increases and decreases should not be very noticeable as more rounds are added. We will continue to add filler pieces until the puzzle rounds are so close that we can no longer fit in any filler pieces. Then we will use the smaller pieces that we've been setting aside for the final rounds. Keep going until you have a nice, flat, together top. Now that we have a nice, flat top, we have to decide how to cover it. There are several ways. If you have been saving unusual pieces, you can use those to cover the gap between the two rows. For this puzzle, we're going to do a braid or overlap finish. Because I don't have enough pieces left from my first puzzle, I'm going to use some pieces that are close in color from another puzzle. If I knew I was going to run out, I would have included some pieces from the second puzzle earlier in the wreath. That would help blend in the colors a little better. But these pieces match well enough that I can use them. I have laid out a 15 by 12 grid of puzzle pieces, distributing the colors. That's a total of 180 pieces just for the top. And we'll use even more after we are done with this braid effect. To start the braid or overlap row, lay two pieces across each other, overlapping their tips and making a V shape. Do not glue the first two pieces. This allows you to tuck the last pieces in after you have completed the whole round. Then begin gluing pieces as you place them in the same pattern. Take your time and let the glue dry if you are having trouble keeping the pieces in place. As you come back around, lift those two beginning pieces that you did not glue down to insert the final pieces of your braid or overlap pattern. This is a really nice top to the wreath, but it can also leave a little ledge that we want to smooth out. We'll do that by inserting little puzzle pieces. Cut the remaining pieces and arrange them so that the colors are distributed. Work around the inside, finding places to glue and tuck them in. Work around the outside, finding places to glue and tuck the small pieces in. Go over the whole wreath again, using as many pieces as needed to support other pieces or fill in gaps. Brush on a coat of polyurethane so that the wreath is ready for any kind of weather. Do this on both the top and the back of the wreath. We seal the wreaths we make with two more sprayed coats 
before putting a hanger on the back. Sometimes we add a 9 to 12 inch bow with small nail brads. That's a good way to hide a mistake or cover over a place if you have run out of puzzle pieces. Putting together a beautiful wreath is as relaxing and as much fun as putting together a jigsaw puzzle. They make great gifts and are beautiful decor. We're going to Grandma's house today. Hurrah! Hurrah!